Hello, Fit Forever, Dr. Jeremy James here. Today, I'm gonna to take you through the second part of what I like to call our Blueprints series. I call it Blueprints because we're laying the foundation of all of the common movements and exercises in the Fit Forever program. You are gonna get a good workout today, but the goal of this is to really nail the form. Okay, we're teaching you these basic movements and exercises upon which the rest of your Fit Forever program is built. These are also the same movements and exercises which daily life and sports are built on. So in the first part of this series, we went over squatting, side to side with lateral lunging, rotating, pushing, and pulling. Today, we're gonna go over split squatting, diagonal up and down movements, back stepping, also called a reverse lunge, or push up, our lat pull down and overhead pressing. And those two videos, this one that we're doing today and the previous one really cover all of the fundamental movements. All you're gonna need today is tubing. Most of you are probably gonna want relatively light tubing for this workout today. Some of you may want a chair or a couch and that's just to show you an easier version of a push-up. So if you can't do a push-up, or you can't do a push-up on your knees, you may wanna have a couch, a table, a chair nearby, even a bench if you have one, if you're in a gym, uh, to do the push-ups on. And then I've got a medicine ball here. Now you don't need a medicine ball. Any household item will do. If you have a small dumbbell, that'll be okay. If you have a bottle of wine or a carton of milk, anything about that weight, two to five, this is eight pounds, will suffice. I'm gonna assume you've done your fundamentals already because it's crucial to do those before we get into loaded movement. So if you haven't done those, go ahead and pause, go back and do it. We're gonna do 10 to 12 repetitions of each exercise today. And again, while you will get a good workout, the goal here isn't to get your heart rate up, it's to nail these movements. So let's go ahead and start with our first movement, the split squat. Now the split squat is an exercise upon which the lunge is built and other kind of dynamic movements. The goal with the split squat, and it's challenging for most people, especially in the beginning, is to use the gluteal muscles of the back leg to lift your body up. So when I'm coming up, notice I'm extending through the hip here, this muscle's contracting, lifting me up, which takes load off the knees. This is gonna make you stronger in a lunging position and also just walking, running, any kind of sports where you're moving. So a challenging exercise, so pay close attention. Let's take our right foot forward, our left leg back. I'm gonna show you a side view first. I've got two, three, maybe four, if you're comfortable with it, leg links uh, between my feet, or sorry, foot links between my feet. And notice when I go down, my knee doesn't shift forward over my toes. That puts a lot of stress on the knee. So we're going down like an elevator, not forward and back like an escalator, okay? Good tall posture, neutral spine, lock the core in, shoulders down and back, drop your body straight down, only go down as far as you can without shifting that knee forward. And then importantly, activate, put your hand back there if you're not sure, activate or squeeze the glutes of the back leg and lift yourself up from there, then let go. Okay, ready, let's do 12. Let's start the first rep now. One, good tall posture. Two, up and down like an elevator. Three, make sure those black glutes are working. Four, five, your distance may not be this wide, that's fine. Go as, as wide as you feel comfortable with. Six, if you need to hang on to something for balance, that's fine too. Seven, eight, nine, make sure you're using that glute, I'll show you a front view. 10, good tall posture, 11, and 12, shake it out. Okay, if you really struggled with knowing whether that muscle was turned on or feeling whether it was working, let's stop, take a minute, lean on something, take your finger, just put it right below the waistline here and just kick that back leg out. Feel that muscle turn on. You'll feel it get tighter. That's what we're going for here, okay? If you still struggle with that, you may need to go back and do some trigger point release, which you can find in the pain relief section. Okay, let's go left leg forward now. Set our posture, shoulders down and back, core's engaged, chest up tall, neck long, and we're gonna drop our body straight down like an elevator. And now I'm, I'm engaging my right glutes as I come up, coming up on the ball of my right foot. Okay, ready, let's go. Make sure that knee doesn't come over the toes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nice and slow, eight, control up and down, nine, 
10, make sure you go down slowly as well as up. 11, engaging that glute of the back leg, and 12. If you've had knee pain with up and down movements, you're likely gonna notice that the knee pain decreases or goes away when you're activating those glutes because it takes load off of the knee. Okay, the next exercise is one that you're gonna need the dumbbell, the medicine ball, bottle of wine, jug of milk for. This is called a diagonal reach. Now, many of the movements we do in daily life and sport are in a diagonal pattern. And actually, the muscles in our body are oriented that way mostly. So it's a very important movement to master. Now, we've done the rotation, which can be similar. We're going to add an up and down vector to it now. So the move is like this, and I want you to watch my hips. As always, when we rotate, our whole body turns as a cylinder. And then as I go down, I'm doing a, a bit of a split squat like we just did and reaching forward, hinging at the hips a little bit, but I'm keeping neutral spine. I'm not rounding my back. So as always, good tall posture. So I'm gonna put my hands on my hips so you can see the hip movement. It's like this, going down, and I'm turning, pivoting my back foot and coming up. And go ahead and put your hands there if you're not sure. And then we're just gonna add some weight to it. For many of you, if, this, if you're not comfortable adding weight, just use your hands. I'll start with just the hand movement. It looks like this. So I'm gonna go right, down, up, left. Right down, bring it in, up, left. And you can imagine, this is a daily movement we do a lot. This is picking up groceries, putting them up in the cabinet. Unloading the dishwasher, putting it up in the cabinet. Things like that, okay? If you wanna use the weight, you're comfortable with it, go ahead and grab that. Let's do 12 repetitions on each side. Set your posture, shoulders down and back, core engaged. Turn, a bit of a split squat. I'm gonna push up through this heel, bring it into my body, rotate by turning the whole body as a cylinder and put it out. Two. Three, don't let your shoulders come up in your ears here. Keep them down, locked in place. Four. Five. Good, strong posture. Keep those shoulders out of your ears. Six, seven, don't twist your spine. Eight, nine, three to go, hang in there. 10, keep your shoulders out of your ears. 11, 12, great job. Just a couple of reminders there. You wanna make sure that your body's always turning in a cylinder. When you're twisting at the waist, it looks like this. Hips still going that way, sternum over here. Always twist the body in a cylinder. It's a more powerful movement and it spares your back of potential damage and pain. Okay, let's go to the other side. We're gonna go down to my left, up to my right. Set your posture, shoulders down, core engaged, slight bend in the knee. Rotate from the hips, down, pivot, Pivot the left foot up, that's one. Nice and slow, two, keep those shoulders out of your ears. Three, avoid this, nice strong position. Lats engaged. Four. Five, remember you can drop the weight if it's too much. Six, the goal here is nailing these movements. Seven, making sure you get them right. We want this to become muscle memory. Eight, so that you're always moving in a healthy way. Nine. Ten, two more, hang in there. Eleven, keep the back still and quiet. And twelve, great job. You can set that weight down. The next one we're gonna do is a step back or reverse lunge. If you're uncomfortable with your balance, you can get something to hang on to here. If you're near a chair, put your arm like that. If you got a broom or a mop, a golf club, you can hold that for help. One of the goals of the step back or reverse lunge is to keep nice, tall, upright posture. If you can only go here, that's fine. The goal for most of us is to come back a little further, but make sure you're not leaning one way or the other. The key is good posture, so if you can only come to here with good posture, and when you start to go back, you have to bend or lean, stay with the short range of motion. It'll improve in time as you get stronger and more flexible and mobile, okay? 
we're gonna step back. The left leg moves back first. The right leg stays in place. We wanna keep our knee over our right foot. Don't let it come forward. Set your posture, chest up tall. Found your neutral spine. Engage the core to keep it still. Let's go in three, two, one. Step back. Now I've got some weight on the ball of my foot and the heel of my front foot, and I'm gonna push into the heel of my front foot as I step up to activate the glutes of my right leg. Ready? That's one. Two, if you need to hold on to something for balance, that's fine. Three, I got a little off balance there. Four, now we're working on balance, coordination. Five, strengthen our hips. Six, I'll show you a front version, keep going. And this is gonna make us better. Seven, in the activities that we like to do and just daily life. Eight, it's gonna prevent injuries. It's gonna make us feel better. Nine, less pain. 10, two more. 11, I'll show a small range of motion. You may look like this, that's fine. 12, okay, catch your breath. Reset and remember, I will always want you asking yourself, would Dr. James approve of how I move? Get that stuck in there. You'll thank me someday when you notice you're moving better and feeling better. Okay, now we're gonna step back with the right leg. Left leg stays in place, knee stays over the left foot. Let's set our posture, neutral spine locked in, shoulders down and back. Let's step back with one. You can start with a small range of motion if that's what you need to do. Two, but notice my body stays erect with good posture. Three, four, five, keep those shoulders out of your ears. Six, I'm gonna show a front view. Seven, eight, if you're using that balance aid, keep using it throughout this workout. You'll notice as you start to get stronger, nine, you'll use it less and less. 10, 11, one more, and 12, well done. Shake it out. Now's where, where I'm going to get into that push-up pattern. I'm gonna show you three versions. You just watch this real quick and then decide which one's the most appropriate for you, okay? Let's start with the easiest one for most people. I'm gonna show you the incline push-up, and this can be done anywhere, on the side of a couch. I'm actually gonna show you quite a low version, but you can even start way up here. Even on a wall is fine. The main things to pay attention to for all three of these versions is that your torso stays stiff. We wanna lock our neutral spine in place by engaging our core, and then think of this as a moving plank. The only thing moving are the shoulder and elbow joints. Everything else in here stays still. So I'll show you the incline first. And again, you may be way up here and that's, that's fine. Just make sure you get the form right. Once you have your hands on either the wall, the chair, or the couch, pull your shoulder blades down and back, stick your chest out, lock your core in. Let's put your feet close together. And then you're gonna drop your elbows in, not out to the sides. And notice my torso is not moving, okay? And we want those elbows to come in towards the rib cage, not out here. That can cause some impingement and some shoulder issues. Second most difficult version is push up on knees. Same concept though. Pull those shoulder blades back down towards your back pockets, activating the lats. Get on your knees, elbows come in, and the torso does not move. And for those of you that are a bit more advanced, you can do the regular push up. I wanna really challenge you on that one to keep the feet together, squeeze the buttocks. It makes it quite a bit more difficult and you're also engaging and working all the muscles in your body just about. So regular push up, same concepts. Feet together, shoulder blades down and back and bring those elbows in towards the rib cage, okay? Figure out which one you wanna do, get in position. Let's do 10 repetitions, nice and slow. 10 slow push ups are a lot of work and they build a lot of strength. There's no need to just go back and forth and try to get 50 in if you're doing poor form. Okay, so if you're gonna do regular push-ups up on your toes, squeeze your buttocks together, shoulders down and back, everybody else, let's do it. Nice and slow. One, two, notice my torso isn't moving. Three, it's like a moving plank, my body. Four, the only things that are moving 
Five are my elbows and my shoulders. Six, four to go. Seven, three more. Eight, two to go. Nine, one more. And 10, knees down first if you're doing the regular push-up. You'll notice that that's actually quite a lot of work if you're doing it the right way. When you get stronger, you can add more repetitions, but make sure you're keeping good form. Okay, let's grab our tubing. We're going to do a standing lat pull down. The lats are the latissimus dorsi. Big muscles that attach to the back of your arm, go down the sides of your body, and integrate into your lower back. These are the most important spinal stabilizers, also crucial for shoulder health. When I tell you to pull your shoulders down and back, the lats are doing part of the work. So it's crucial that you understand and can master a good lat pull down movement. So take your tubing, grip it like this, and then wrap it around the back of your hand and hold like this. I want you to position your arms about 45 degrees from vertical. So kind of in front of me, kind of over me, but not fully either. And then the motion, first of all, pull your shoulder blades down and back. This, these muscles up here should be relaxed. So keep them out of your ears. And we're gonna pull down and back and pull that across the chest. And then importantly, as we come back up, we're keeping our shoulder blades down, not letting them rise up to our ears, okay? We're gonna maintain this position throughout. I'm gonna show you an oblique angle for a few and then I'll turn to face you. Okay, ready? Set your position, knees bent, neutral spine locked in, core engaged, pull down, one. Keep those shoulders out of your ears, two, three, four, keep those shoulders down, good posture, five, you should feel the muscles right under here working, six, I'll show you a front view, seven, watch my shoulders, they don't come up into my ears, Eight, let's go to 12, nice and slow. Nine. 10, two more. 11 and 12, great job. Now, if you were doing that pretty well, you're gonna feel the work happening under here, maybe a little up here, but not too much. If you're feeling all the work up here, work on that form a little bit more, okay? We're gonna do one more exercise, and then we're gonna go through that whole series again, okay? So you'll need your tubing for this next one as well. I want you to grab it in one hand, let's do the right arm, and then step on it with both feet, and you're not gripping the other hand. Then I want you to take it so that your palm is facing you, and it's up near your shoulder with your elbow bent like this. It's just an overhead press. And just like with the lat pull down, I wanna avoid this. Our maximum range of motion is here. Don't get that extra inch or two by hiking the shoulder blade. That can cause some problems. If you can only get to here, if you don't have the strength or you have a shoulder or elbow issue, that's fine. Just make sure you're keeping that shoulder in a healthy position throughout. Okay, ready? Palm facing your body, grip it. Core engaged, good tall posture. One. I'm gonna show you the wrong way this time. Don't do this. Two, nice and slow. Three, four, five, nice and slow. You should feel some work under here. Six, seven, eight, four to go. Hang in there. Nine, 10, two more, 11 and 12. Great job, switch sides. We're gonna do the left arm, step on the tubing with both feet, if you want more resistance, you go with a wider stance, less resistance, a more narrow stance. Palm facing your body, set your posture, pull those shoulder blades down towards your back pockets, knees bent, core engaged, let's do it. One, keep that shoulder out of your ear. It's easy to do. Two, we get in the habit of doing that with our texting, our computer work. Three, driving. Four. Five. Six, six to go. If you can only come here, that's fine. Seven, eight for the rest of you. Go to maximum. Nine, three more. 10, 11, one to go. And 12, well done. Now look, if you're brand new to exercise, that may be it for you. You can finish that up, 
maybe go do one of our stretching routines, which are great to do after your workouts. For the rest of you, if you want a bit, a bit more of a workout, I'm gonna repeat that for another set right now, and we're gonna go a little bit more quickly, okay? But still, make sure you're mastering those movements. Let's start with the split squat. I'm going right leg forward, left leg back. Remember, it's up and down like an elevator, not forward and back like an escalator. Engaging the glute of the back leg as you come up. Ready, 12 repetitions, let's go. One, engage that glute. If you're not sure, put your finger in there. Two, three, four, master that movement. Five, such a great exercise. Six, to build hip strength. Seven, eight, to avoid injuries. Nine, three more. 10, 11, and 12. Switch legs. I'll show you a front view for this one. Now I've got the left leg forward, right leg back. Good tall posture, shoulders down towards our back pockets. Let's go. One, work those right glutes now. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, keep good posture. Eight, don't let the knee come forward. Nine, feel that glute working. 10, 11, one more. 12, great job. Okay, we're gonna do that diagonal reach. You can use your household item, a dumbbell, gripping it on both sides. I'm gonna use the medicine ball. Let's go down to the right, up to the left. Remember, the body turns as a cylinder, no twisting at the waist, okay? And no rounding the back. Let's do it. Down to the right, up to the left. One, two, three, such a good exercise. Four, to build muscle memory. Five, this will keep you healthy. Six, for years and years. Seven, eight, nine, three to go, hang in there. 10, two more. Keep those shoulders out of your ears. 11, don't let them creep up there. 12, great job. I was mentioning this will keep you healthy because think about how many times you do movements like this and if you get in the bad habit of twisting your back, it'll catch up with you someday. This is gonna avoid that. Down to the left, up to the right, ready? Set your posture, let's do it. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, almost there. Eight, keep those shoulders out of your ears. Nine, ten, two more, eleven. And 12, great job. I know you hear me say keep those shoulders out of your ears a lot. It's important though. If you get into the habit of lifting like this, over recruiting your upper traps and deltoids, it causes a world of problems, neck pain, shoulder injuries. So when I have that out extended, these muscles are supporting my shoulders, not just here, okay? So keep working that until you get it right. Let's do that reverse lunge, otherwise known as a step back. Stand tall, good posture. Let's go left leg back first. And remember not to let your knee come forward or back over your stationary foot. Let's do it. One. Two, if you need a balance aid, go for it. Three. Four, only go back as far as you can while keeping good posture. Five. Six, six to go. Seven, eight, four more, hang in there. Good tall posture. Nine, 10, two more. 11, and 12, well done. I'm gonna step back with the right leg now. I'll face the camera so you can see me from a different angle. Okay, good tall posture. Shoulders down and back towards our back pockets. Neutral spine, core is engaged, ready? Step back, one, two. If you're using a balance aid, it looks like this, or maybe like this, three, 
I like to have my hands out here as a counterbalance. Four, five, six, seven, eight, four to go. Hang in there. Feel that glute working now. Nine, you should too. Push up through that heel. 10, 11, and 12. Well done, shake it out. We're almost through this workout. Okay, decide which of those three variations of push-up you wanna do, and let's get in position. I'm gonna show the regular push-up. Remember, elbows come in towards the, the rib cage, not out to the sides, and our body, our torso stays stiff. The only thing moving, shoulders and elbows. Let's get our neutral spine locked in by engaging the core. If you're doing the regular, come up on your feet, otherwise stay on your knees or on the chair. Let's go, nice and slow. Squeeze the glutes if you're doing regular push-up. One, two, three, torso stays stiff. Four, five, six, six to go. Seven, eight, four more. Nine, three to go. 10, two more, 11, and 12. Knees down if you're doing regular push-up. Well done. Two more exercises. Grab your tubing. We're gonna do that lat pull-down. And as you may have noticed, I'm just gonna call myself out there. I, thought, I saw that this tubing was stuck under the ball, and I bent forward at my back. I never do that. <laughs> I caught myself. We always wanna move in a squat pattern if we can. So I'm gonna pick that up again. That's the right way to do it. Okay, so take it, grip it like this, close your hand, twist it around, now we're ready, okay? Let's bring our arms up about 45 degrees from vertical, pull those shoulder blades down back towards the spine, bend your knees, and pull it across the chest, okay? Ready, let's go. One, good tall posture. Two, I'll show you a side view in a minute. Three, or sorry, a front view. Four, Five, six, front view, you keep going. Seven, eight, nine, three more. 10, two more. 11, and 12, well done. Okay, last exercise. Keep your tubing, step up in it with both feet. Keep it gripped in your right hand, remember wider, Stands for more resistance, narrow for less. Palms facing your body. Keep that shoulder out of your ears and press up as high as you can without hiking the shoulder. Ready, let's go. One, two, three, we are almost there. Four, remember I want you to ask yourself, five, always. Six, would Dr. James approve of how I move? Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. You gotta remember, it's those thousands of movements we do in everyday life that add up and can cause pain, injury, and dysfunction. So start now by doing them correctly and you won't get to that point where you need re rehabilitation or therapy or surgery. So that's why I want that stuck in your head. Would Dr. James approve of how I move? It will save you so much pain and heartache down the road, I promise. Set your posture, chest out, shoulders back. Last exercise, one, two, three, four, five, almost done, six, seven, eight, four to go, nine, 10, two more, 11, and 12, all right. Give yourself a hand. Well done. So I hope that you really learned some things there. You can come back to this one. We'll keep giving you this one throughout your program. You can come back to it whenever you want though. These are the important movements that are gonna make an everyday difference in your life. If you're still up for more, I recommend you do one of our stretching routines. That can really help to loosen things up after a tough workout. So thanks for joining me. You did a great job. Until next time, remember, Change comes with commitment. Keep working at this stuff. It'll change your body and change your life. 
Never miss the latest videos from your doctor-designed fitness experts. Subscribe now.